Lesson one is slope and parallel lines, and in 1.1, we're going to review how to find slope from a graph and from a set of points. So when you're looking at slope from a graph, we typically view it as rise over run, and that's what this formula is written right here as. So m, which is the letter that we use to represent slope, equals rise over run, and then you may or may not have seen these symbols before, this like triangle y and triangle x. That triangle means change. It's a symbol called delta that just usually is shorthand in math for a change, like the change in y over the change in x, which means the same thing as rise over run. So rise is referring to the vertical change. So vertical change, and I'm just going to shorten change with the triangle as well so we get comfortable with it. And if it's helpful, add a little note to yourself that that triangle just means change in case you forget it later on. And then run is referring to the horizontal change. And those values we just are able to count on a graph, like how far do we go up or down or left or right. So in order to find the slope, you need two points on a line. So on this graph, we have point A and point B. And the rise of a run is kind of already drawn for us, but we'll go over it as well. So we'll say M is equal to rise goes in the numerator, which is how far we're going up or down. And then run goes in the denominator, which is how far we're going side to side. So for a rise, we go up one, two, three, four. So the rise would be a positive four. And then for the run, we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the right. So it'd be a positive seven. Up and to the right are gonna be positive, down or left would end up being negative. So we have M equals four sevenths. And since that can't be reduced, that's our final answer for our slope of that line. When you're finding the slope between two points, we typically use this formula right here, or, well, these are really the same thing. Um, you'll see sometimes, like, they have the y1 and y2, or sorry, y1 and x1 in the front, like we do right here. Or sometimes you'll see it with a y2 and x2 in the front right there. It really doesn't matter, and you'll see why in a second. It just, all you have to be really careful about is that you're, like, consistent with the points. So this formula is, it really means the same thing as rise over run. It's just used more frequently when um, you're given the points instead of the actual graph itself. So I'm going to just take the points from this graph to kind of use that formula and see if we get the same outcome for the slope. So point A, if we're starting at the origin, we have to go left 4 and then up 1. So that point would be negative 4, 1. And then point B, if we start at the origin, would be right 3 and then up 5. So that would be the point 3, 5. So I'm going to take those two points and use the slope formula. And I should end up with the same exact slope, 4 sevenths, because it is the same exact line. It's just a different way of finding that slope. So one point, point A is negative 4, 1. And then the other point B is 3, 5. And like I said, it really doesn't matter like which way you write the original formula. Um, I will write it this way more often. It's just like habit. Um, and it also really doesn't matter which point you make like your point one and which point you make your point two. It, it kind of all ends up being the same as long as you like treat the process correctly. So I'm going to say that B is my point one and A is my point two. And you can pick. It doesn't really matter. So that would mean that three is X1. 5 is y1, because they're from point 1, and then negative 4 would be x2, and 1 would be y2, since that were, they were from the second point. And then now when I go to put those values in the formula, so it's y1 minus y2, so it would be y1, which is 5, right there, minus y2, which is 1, right there, so minus 1. And then in the denominator, um, let's see, we have x1, which is 3, and then minus x2, which is negative 4. And then we just have to be careful with the double negatives there. So I'm going to simplify the denominator first. So whenever you have a double negative, it actually turns into a plus. So 3 minus negative 4 is the same thing as 3 plus 4, so 7. 
and then 5 minus 1 in the numerator is 4. So we end up getting the same answer, m, or the slope is 4 sevenths. And you should get the same answer because, like I said, it's the same exact line as the first example we did. It was just a different way of finding the slope. It's not that one way is better than the other. It's that, like, you, you typically use one strategy when you are, like, given a graph versus given the points like we did in the second example. For the next section, we're going to prove that parallel lines always have the same slope. And in this graphic right here, we actually can't find the slope itself, but we can prove that the slopes of those two lines are equal. So in this graphic, line K and line L are parallel. And in order to prove that they have the same exact slope, we're actually going to take advantage of similar triangles to show that the rise and the run are going to be the same. So if we look at this little graphic in the upper left corner, you could see that like between the rise and the run and the line itself, you can create a right triangle. So we're going to create those triangles on this new graphic and then prove that those triangles are similar and set up a proportion. So if we draw a triangle that's finding the rise over run of the red line, line K, to get from R to S or S to R, this would be my rise right here. And then, excuse me, this would be our run right here. So remember, rise is just like our vertical change. So it should be a vertical line, how far we're going up or down. And run is the horizontal change, how far side to side. And like, yes, you could te technically like draw it this way. But for the sake of this problem, it's easier if we draw it like kind of up above. And then we'll do the same thing for... Um, the blue line, line L. So the rise between point P and Q would be this vertical change to go down from P to Q. So this would be my rise. And then my run, my horizontal change would be this distance right here to go from P like kind of over to the right to Q. So this is my run. And the reason that we kind of drew like these triangles inside here is because we'll be able to take advantage of like some of these angles being vertical angles because they are connected in order to start to prove the similarities. So that's why we chose like kind of that side of each line. Okay, so now we have our triangles once we connect with our like lines themselves. So I have that like red triangle that's with the rise and run of line K and then this blue triangle that's the rise and run of line L. And then now I want to show that the basically the rise and run are like proportional or the ratio is the same. Um, in order to do that, I need to show that those two triangles that we just drew are similar. So in order to show that two triangles are similar, I just need two pairs of corresponding angles that are congruent. So you can see like right here, angle QOP is a vertical angle with angle SOR. And that means that those are congruent. So we got that pair. And then angle P and angle R are going to be alternate interior angles because like if this is my transversal, they're inside the parallel lines and on opposite sides of that transversal and that means that they're congruent. So all of a sudden we have two pairs, this pair and this pair of corresponding angles that are congruent. So it's enough to say that the two triangles are similar. So we can say triangle, which this time it does mean triangle, not change, but triangle uh, P. O, Q is similar, so just the one little squiggly line, to triangle R, O, S. And then now that they are similar, that means that their side lengths are proportional, so we can write a proportion between their sides. So I'm going to draw or create a fraction that's kind of created by the two, like, legs of the, we'll start with the blue triangle. So I'm going to say P, O over Q O. So that's this side over this side. And that's going to be equal to kind of like the matching pair of legs from the red triangle. So like in the numerator, we put P O, which was this side. And that corresponds with this side right here. So that would be R O. So I'd have to put R O in the numerator. And then in the denominator of that first fraction, I put QO, which was this side, and that corresponds with SO, this side over here. So I'd have to put SO in the denominator. 
And then this first fraction, that's from that like blue triangle. And the second one is from that red triangle. Okay, so we have a ratio and like that's always true because these triangles are similar. So all their sublengths are proportional um, to like their corresponding part. And then now if we take a step back, so we just said that PO, which originally we said PO was the rise. I'm going to try to color code these as best as possible. So the rise of the blue triangle over QO, which was the run of the blue triangle. And then that's equal to... RO, let me erase the old highlighter, but RO, which is the rise of that red triangle, so rise of the red triangle over the, over SO, which was the run of that red triangle. So you'll notice like once we actually put like what those sides were representing in terms of rise or run, we ended up with like rise over run the slope of the blue line over rise over run the slope of the red line. So without knowing the slope, we should prove that the slopes were equal. And that kind of leads us into the main rule for this section. So moving down here, Two distinct lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. So that's like a non-negotiable. You got to know that like in order for lines to be parallel, they must have the same slope and all, sl all lines with the same slope are parallel, assuming that they're not the same exact line. Okay, so before the next example, um, we do kind of need to actually I'm gonna hold off for a second. Um, I was going to say we do have a formula to review over here, but I'm going to save that because it kind of goes along more specifically with B. So I think we'll review it right before we do part B of example one. Okay, so example one, determine if the following lines are parallel. So A, a line, or yeah, part A, A, a line passing through the points 0, 1, and 2, 5, and a line passing through the points C, is 0, 7, D, 4, 15. So we have two different lines here. The first line passes through 0, 1, and 2, 5, and the second line passes through 0, 7, and 4, 15. So we kind of have to treat it as if it's two different find the slope problems, and then the question is asking if they are parallel. So we'll find the slope of each individual line, and then we just need to see if they end up being the same. So I'm gonna call this like part one, and then this will be part two. So that first line, part one, is only going to have to do with these two points. So we're given those points. We'll go ahead and use like the slope formula for them. I'm just going to rewrite them down here. So 0, 1, and 2, 5. And then the slope formula is m equals y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. And it doesn't matter which point you make your like one or two. I typically try to make like if all my points are positive, I try to make the bigger numbers my ones and the smaller numbers my twos just so because the way I set up the formula, um, that way I don't have to deal with negatives. Okay, so I'm going to make two five my point one and zero one my point two. So my x one will be two, my y one will be five, my x two will be zero, my y two will be one. So... We'll put 5 in right here. We'll put 2 in right here. We'll put 1 in for y2, and we'll put 0 in for x2. So it'll be 5 minus 1 for y1 minus y2, and then 2 minus 0 for x1 minus x2. And then um, 5 minus 1 is 4 over 2 minus 0, which is 2, and then 4 divided by 2 simplifies to 2. So we're left with m equals 2. And then I want to add one thing really quick. So with the slope formula, um, I know I said it doesn't matter like the order as long as you're keeping it consistent. Um, I want to kind of just express that it does matter that the y's are always in the numerator and the x's are always in the denominator. So the y should always be on top and the x's should always be on the bottom. And that's how it's written in these two formulas up here. I just kind of want to stress that. Okay, so that's part one. And we'll just kind of repeat that process with 
um, the second set of points for part two. So that is 0, 7, and 4, 15. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy the slope formula down and we'll code it kind of the same way. Oops, not that far down. Okay, so I'm going to say that this is my point one and then this is my point two. So this will be x1, y1, x2, y2. So y1 is going to be 15, y2 is going to be 7, and then x1 is going to be 4, and x2 is going to be 0. So y1, 15, minus y2, 7, over x1, 4, minus 0 for x2. Um, I don't know if I might have misspoke, but x1, 4, minus x2, 0. And then subtract from the numerator, 15 minus 7 is 8, over 4 minus 0 is 4, and then divide 8 divided by 4 is 2, so we end up with m equals 2. And so we found each individual slope, like the slope of each line, and they ended up being exactly the same. So if they're exactly the same, excuse me, that means that yes, the two lines are parallel and we usually shorten parallel to like those two slashed lines. For example, 1b, that's the one that's kind of boxed over here with the slope intercept form formula. Same general problem though, so I'm just going to reread the directions. Determine if the following lines are parallel. So in 1b, instead of given like a line through a certain set of points, we're given the equation for those lines and they're both in slope intercept form. So slope intercept form is a like formula for linear equations. Um, linear equations are just like straight lines on a graph. So slope intercept form itself is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. So the question was asking us to determine if the two lines are parallel. These two equations are two different lines. So like we call this line one and this line two. In order to determine if they're parallel, if any two lines are parallel, we just need to see if they have the same slope. So we need to look and figure out, okay, where is slope in the formula? It's the number that's being multiplied by the x. So in our actual equations, we look for the number that's being multiplied by the x which in both of those equations, it's one third. So both of the slopes in each equation are one third. So yes, they're the same, and yes, these lines are parallel. So biggest stress like from this section is that no matter what like kind of form the question is, if the slopes are the same, that means that the lines are parallel, assuming that they're not the same line. And the only thing in slope intercept form that would make them the same exact line is if the y intercepts were also the same. But these are different, so we're okay. We have two parallel lines. Okay, so moving down to 1.2. So this is writing equations of parallel lines, and there's a couple different ways we can go about this. They require two different formulas. So I'm gonna show you basically the same problem kind of two different ways. So before we get into the example or review the formulas, one is that same formula from up above, so slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. The other one is point slope form, and that formula is right here, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where m is the slope again, that's kind of, it's just standard, that won't really change, and then um, x1 and y1 are a point on the line. So ultimately, it comes down to personal preference which of the methods you end up choosing. I will most likely use method one more often in examples, um, however, sometimes like example two, or not example two, but method two is kind of thrown into some of the workbooks where that formula is required to know. So I just want you to be somewhat familiar with it. So example one, find the equation of the line that is parallel to y equals negative three x plus five and passes through the point one four. The instructions don't say this, but I should have written it. We're going to write both of our final answers in slope intercept form. So in y equals mx plus b. So first part of this question is to figure out what does the slope need to be? So we need to find the equation of the line that is parallel to 
y equals negative 3x plus 5. So parallel means same slope. So we need to find the slope of that line. It's in slope intercept form. So that means the slope is going to be the number multiplied by x. So in this case, it's negative 3. So our slope for our new line has to be the same. So it's going to be negative 3. And that's regardless of which method we are using. Because in order to write a line that's parallel to that one that's given to us, it's got to get the same slope. Okay, so for method number one, our first step is going to be to take the slope intercept form formula and go ahead and just put our slope in it. So we know our slope has to be negative 3. So we're going to go ahead and just put negative 3 in where m is. So it will become y equals negative 3x plus b. And then notice I put plus b. I didn't put plus 5. If I put plus 5, that wouldn't give me a line that's parallel. It would give me the same exact line. So I need to find a different line. And I need to make sure that my line passes through this point. So to make sure that my line passes through that point, I need to use that point to help me solve for b. So that means that that point is going to go into the equation for x and y. So 1 is going to go in for x and then 4 is going to go in for y into that method 1 section. So we'll put 4 right here. And then we'll put one right there for x. And it's just any point that you're given um, could vary depending on the problem. And that's what's going to help us solve for b. So we'll put 4 in for y and then equals negative 3 times 1 goes in for x plus b. And then now b is our only unknown, so we're able to solve for it. So we'd want to multiply these two together. Um, of course, it's just negative 3 still since we're just multiplying by 1, but it could be different in the future. So we'll multiply those two numbers. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus b. And then my ultimate goal is to get b completely by itself. So I need to cancel out that minus 3 or negative 3 by adding 3 to both sides. So 4 plus 3 is 7. And then that's equal to negative 3 plus 3. That cancels out. And I bring down the b. So it's just 7 equals b. And then for my final answer, so I just found that b is equal to 7. I just need to take that and put that in for b now to write my final equation. So y equals same slope, negative 3x. That's what makes it parallel to the like equation from the problem. And then plus 7 for b. That's the b that makes sure that we go through the point that we're given um, 1 for. So that's one method. And then... Oh, it didn't turn into a rectangle. Um, the second method is using um, point slope form. So like I said, it's entirely up to you. So it's good to get comfortable with it and really figure out which one you like more. So for uh, method number two, our first step is exactly the same. We still know our slope is going to be negative three. So we're going to go ahead and put that in for m. So it'll be y minus y1 equals negative three times x minus x1. So we've got that done. And then now I'm going to go back up here. So the section that's kind of like describing point slope form, it says that x1 and y1, so like this x1 and this y1, are from a point on the line. And we're given a point that our line is supposed to go through. It's this point right here, 1, 4. So we're just going to make those our x1 and our y1. So we'll put 1 in for x1 and then 4 in for y1. So it'd be y minus 4 and then equals negative 3 times x minus 1. And then if we want our ultimate goal um, to get our equation to be in slope intercept form, we are eventually going to want to get y by itself. So before we do that, we'll go ahead and distribute on like the right side of the equal sign over here. So it'll be y minus 4, and then if I distribute, it's negative 3 times x is negative 3x, and negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, and then, like I said before, you just eventually want to get y by itself for it to be in the slope-intercept form. 
So I would need to cancel out that minus four by adding four to both sides. And I'm gonna line it up under the three on the other side because those are like terms. So it'll be y and then negative four plus four cancels out equals bring down the negative three x. And then three plus four is seven. So y equals negative three x plus seven. So notice we got the same exact equation as ex like as method one and you should because we answered the same problem. They were both off example one of writing an equation parallel to y equals negative three x passing through one four. So you can, it's completely up to you which method you choose. Just get fairly comfortable with one and try to practice a few times with each one. So if you ever kind of like forced to use one, you're ready. Okay, so example two, this is the last problem. It says write an equation of a line that's parallel to the line in the graph and passes through the point negative five, negative two. So it's very similar to example one. It's just we're not given an equation of a line that we need to be parallel to. We're given a line on a graph. So the first step that we did in example one was to find the slope. We're gonna do that here too. So number one, we'll find the slope. I forgot to write number one. <laughs> I just wrote number, but number one, find slope, so m, and then number two, um, we're going to find the correct y-intercept b. So um, I am going to use method one for this one. If you want to practice with method two, um, you're welcome to, and I'll try to like kind of talk through it like each step with method one as well, um, but just keep that in mind. I'm going to use method one. Okay, so for finding slope on the graph, um, because we're getting the graph, we can just use rise over run. We don't have to use the slope formula. So M equals rise over run. So we've picked two points that are on the graph. They have kind of two points labeled there for us. So I'm just going to use those. So for rise, we're going up three. And then the run, we're going over six to the right. So up three would be a positive three for rise. So the right six would be a positive six for the run since this right is a positive direction for left and right. And then if you can reduce it, you should. So like three, six reduces down to one half. And then that is our M. So that kind of brings us to this portion of the example. So now the rest of it will essentially look the same. The only thing will, that was different was how we find the slope. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the formula. So it's y equals mx plus b. If you want to use the like other formula point slope form, you can write that one and then put our one half in where m is. So y equals one half goes in for m and then times x plus b. Sometimes it can be easy to forget the like x after we put in the slope. Um, you have to leave it there though. And then now we need to figure out, okay, what B is going to make sure that I go through this point, negative 5, negative 2. In order to find it, I need to take that point and put it in for X and Y. So I would put negative 5 in for X right here. And then I would put negative 2 in for Y right there. So it'll be negative 2 times or is equal to one half times x was supposed to be negative five and then plus b sometimes my b start to look like sixes so it is a b though okay so negative two went in for y and then negative five for x and then now b is our only unknown so we're able to solve for it so first we want to go ahead and take these two and multiply them together so negative two and then um negative or sorry one half times negative five is negative five halves and then plus b and then i want to get b completely by itself so i'm going to add five halves to both sides to cancel out that negative five halves so negative five halves plus five halves that's zero that would cancel out I need to get a common denominator to add over here. So I would have to take like my two, I'm just gonna do a little scratch work over here. But if I were to take negative two and get a common denominator with the five halves, I would have to multiply it by two over two. And so I'd become negative four halves. 
So I'm just going to take that negative 2, I'm going to erase it and just replace it with negative 4 halves. And then now I have the common denominator so I can add those two together. I just need to add the numerator. So negative 4 plus 5 is a positive 1 over 2 equals, and then I just need to bring down my b, equals b. So I'm going to erase that work, and then um, now that we've found that b equals 1 half, I can just go ahead and take it and put it into the equation right there where b is, and that will give me my final answer. So y equals 1 half x, and then plus b was also 1 half. So y equals 1 half x plus 1 half. So that is a line that's going to be parallel to the line on the graph, but also goes through the point negative 5, negative 2.